Welcome back to Terpy Eyes. I'm Ryan and in this video we'll be putting together a complete 4x4 grow tent setup. This is not a kit, each piece of equipment is purchased separately. With that being said, this video is sponsored by Mars Hydro. They provided me with a discount code Terpy Eyes that can be used on their website to save yourself some money on any of the products they offer. We will start off by assembling the grow tents frame. Quality of the Mars Hydro tents have drastically improved over the last couple of years. Being a cost friendly option, this tent is definitely at the top of the list for me in this price range. This is the 2021 model which has the logo of the Mars Hydro embossed into the tent's fabric. One of the common issues with the older models of these tents were that there was pinholes in the fabric. It seems they have finally resolved that issue leaving the newest models completely lightly free. You can see putting the frame together is pretty straightforward. The metal corner pieces are something you want to look for when purchasing a tent. Some companies still use the plastic corners making the tent very flimsy. Not in this case though. We have the metal corners. If you're interested in buying a complete kit all together, I'll link that video in the top right corner for you to check out. Now that the frame is fully together, move it aside, making room for the shell. This is definitely the easiest way to get the shell over the frame. Even with the limited ceiling height like I have, the ceiling fan and light make it a little bit more challenging, but it is still doable. You want to unfold the shell, then unzip it completely making sure the back of the tent is on the floor, leaving the front door facing the ceiling. Slide the frame into the tent shell, then it's very easy to pull each corner of the shell over the frame. Be sure not to tug too hard, as it should be very smooth without any issues. Pulling too hard could cause a rip in one of the seams. After pulling the tent corners over the frame, it's time to upright the tent into its proper orientation. Once it's upright, zip up the bottom zipper The tent comes with a tray for the bottom of the tent. This makes it very easy to clean up if any soil or water may get out onto the floor. Installing it is very simple by spreading it out and then using the Velcro straps on each corner to connect it to the tent poles. When it comes to getting power into the tent, you have a couple options. Either you can extend each power cord for the equipment out of the tent using an extension cord, or you can install a power strip into the tent. As you can see, I chose the second option. Just make sure to fully secure it into your location, making sure that it won't come loose and fall down. Mounting it high so that there's no risk of the electronics coming in contact with any water. The Mars Hydro 4x4 tent comes with three ceiling support poles, which allows you to have a variety of hanging options when it comes to installing the rest of your grow equipment into the tent. Let's get into unboxing one of the newest products from Mars Hydro. This is their 6 inch inline fan with thermostat controller kit, which comes with a 6 inch carbon filter and 6 inch air ducting and metal straps to connect everything together. The inline fan is capable of 350 CFM airflow while at 32 decibel noise rating. The thermostat controller allows you to set your fan up in a variety of ways, such as on, off, or auto. The auto mode allows you to input your desired set points to where you want the fan to turn on at. You can choose between temperature or humidity, then either high or low setting. In the on position, you choose your fan speed anywhere between 1 and 10. The carbon filter comes with white pre-filter that protects your carbon filter from getting clogged. It's important to wash out the pre-filter after every run of plants. You'll be surprised at just how much stuff the pre-filter collects over the couple months of growing your one cycle. This kit also comes in a 4 inch size along with just a speed controller if you don't need the thermostat controller.
The six inch inline fan is only one part of the airflow equipment that is needed for this setup. I like to use ratcheting ropes to support the six inch clip fans that are used to improve the airflow above the canopy. Always go with the Hurricane brand as the quality is great and well worth the extra money compared to the cheaper brands. When it comes to installing the Mars Hydro six inch inline fan, you can either mount it outside the tent, which would help with keeping a little less heat inside, or you can mount it inside, which is what I'll be doing, as I need to keep as much stuff inside the tent to reduce the risk of my pets doing any damage to the equipment. I use the supplied fabric straps to attach the inline fan to the ceiling support pole for the tent. Having the fan mounted this way does take away some of the height in the tent, which lowers your light's maximum height. You'll have to keep that in mind when growing your plants. Even with the metal mounting bracket of the fan up against the metal pole of the tent, there is little to no vibration or noise from my experience. Using the fabric straps helps to avoid any issues with that. The supplied flex ducting makes it very easy to route the air out of the tent. You can either choose to go straight out the ceiling of the tent or out the side, whatever benefits your location the best. Attaching the carbon filter is very simple by using the ratchet rope strap to form a loop which allows the carbon filter to sit inside of it giving it support along with adjustability to get it to the perfect height to align it with the inline fan. You will also want to use aluminum foil tape to seal the joint between the filter and the fan to maximize airflow through the filter. There are two wire connections that need to be made for the fan. One is to attach the control bar and second is for the thermostat sensor. You'll want to mount the controller somewhere out outside of the tent to allow for viewing at all times so you don't need to open the tent. Later in the video you'll see where I actually mounted the controller. We will be using the FCE 6500 LED light from Mars Hydro. This light is advertised as a 5x5 light but after performing a par test on the very similar FC 6500 I found that it is more suitable for a powerful 4x4 setup. As I scrog out most of my grows giving me a full canopy from wall to wall the extra light is definitely needed. The FCE series lights do require some assembly compared to the original FC series. This light features nearly 4,000 high quality bridge lux chips consuming 650 watts of power. You are able to adjust the power consumption with the analog knob which is located on the same bracket as your driver. This package comes with everything needed to assemble the light and install it into your grow space. Overall the light is packaged very well and the build quality is great giving you the confidence needed to include this light into your setup. When it comes to assembling the light, I found a Mars Hydro video on their YouTube channel showing where all the small pieces were used to put the light together, which was much more helpful compared to the instructions provided inside the box with the light. I started off by putting the hanging hardware into the cross poles by slipping the small rectangle piece of metal into the top slot of the cross pole, then using the eye screw to tighten it into place. There are several green triangles along the rail which are used as suggested locations on where to mount your light bars and hanging location. If you're assembling this light at home, choose a better location than me as this table is a bit too small and made it a little bit more challenging than it needed to be. Attaching the light bars to the support cross beams is straightforward by using the supplied thumb screws and aligning every light bar to the green triangle. If I had a better place to do this, I'd attach both sides of each light bar before moving on to the next light bar. Assembling the light on the floor would have been a much easier way of doing it but would have been harder to make a video for you guys. Now that I have one entire side complete, I can slide the light over and work on attaching the other side of the support pole. Don't forget, if you're enjoying this video or found it at all helpful, hit that like button. It really goes a long way in supporting the channel and helping us grow.
With the frame and light bars fully connected, I'm going to mount the LED driver to the actual light. They do provide enough wire length, which would allow you to mount the driver outside of the tent if you would like. The bracket on the driver is adjustable, so you can choose to space out your light bars differently than the recommended green triangles, then it wouldn't be an issue with still mounting the driver on the light. Using the provided round thumb screws locks the driver into place, allowing you not to worry that it won't slip off at any time. Lastly, we just need to connect the wiring. We connect each light bar with the wiring harness, then connect it to the driver. To clean up all the wiring a bit, I chose to zip tie all the extra wiring to the frame. This not only secures it into place to prevent any connections from coming undone at any time, but also makes it look a little cleaner. With the FCE6500 ready to go, let's move on to the air intake for the tent. I showed this product in the last video on the channel in building a grow room and got a lot of questions about it. This product is made by Secret Jardin and is a duct flange kit with a light baffle. The flange kit just clips onto the tent poles to secure it into place. Then you're able to locate the screw holes. I just use a screwdriver to poke the four holes through the tent's fabric. Then I'm able to line the outer ring and screw it into place. Be sure not to over tighten the screw as it is just plastic and doesn't need to be super tight. Once the four screws are tight, you can go ahead and cut the tent fabric out with a knife. I found the light baffle does block all the light from coming into the tent, but it does drastically reduce the airflow going through. I recommend adding three of these to a 4x4 tent. I'll add more later on once we start growing in it. I found the vent opening to be a sensitive area for light leaks, so I've chosen to cut a piece of plastic sheet the size of the opening that fits perfectly into it. Then pull the drawstrings tight leaving me with zero light leaks in this area as the fabric is definitely a lot thinner in these spots it's nice to have an extra layer of barrier to stop anything from coming in next video for this grow tent setup, we'll be growing truffle cakes from in-house genetics. So be sure to come back for that. Until next time, happy growing everyone.